Hey guys, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm at Kendall Hilligus, by the way, you may have seen some of this already, but I showed you all over there. Um, I don't know when this is going to get published, but sometime recently I have showed you guys this, which is a big container full of vintage watercolor from, I don't know, the early 1980s, probably. Um, and these were my dad's when he was at art center in California and, uh, he, they've been cleaning out their basement. And so he found this and, uh, another big, uh, unfortunately empty, uh, art box, but still I'll use the box itself. But, um, yeah, when he asked if I wanted these old paints, uh, of course I immediately was like, yes, yes, I'll take them. And, um, I'm going to show some of them to you guys up close here. Let me get my other camera turned on actually. Yeah, super cool. And some of them are colors that I hadn't heard of before. So I figured I, I want to see how they are, whether you can paint with them or not. And then even if they aren't really good for painting with, um, I uh, thought they looked really cool. So I you know, would maybe take a picture of them and make a painting about them, but, uh, or maybe even both. Maybe I will make a painting of these with the paint that's in them. Um, yeah, regardless, I, uh, I thought they were super cool. I love um, actually here, let me just move the whole container over. I love, uh, anything. I just like old things <laughs> in general. And so, um, old paint, that's a uh, kind of unique something I hadn't ever, um, heard of vintage paints or tried vintage paints, but uh, that's what we're going to do today. So, um, I'm showing these to you guys here. Um, this one I'm really excited about actually, this is cadmium yellow and it's an actual cadmium. So uh, a lot of what is available now is cadmium hue because cadmium is toxic. So don't worry, I'm going to be really careful with it. Um, but there's actual cadmium and then there's cobalt too. Um, this, the price tag fell off of this one, but just this tube of cadmium was like $8 in whatever the early 1980s. So I don't know how much it would be now, but it's a, they're really nice pigments. So, um, they were at the time anyway. So some of it's gouache, some of it's watercolor. Um, we're going to test it out and just mess around. And I'm going to give you guys my first impressions of what it is like to paint with what, like 35 or 40 year old paint. So, um, I am excited to try this out. All right. This is going to be super casual. I'm just going to kind of mess around here and give you some of my first impressions. All right. I think I'm going to try to do some watercolor first. So the watercolor, are all these ones with the stripes on the side, and then the gouache has the big stripe in the middle. Watercolor, gouache. There's the cadmium yellow. We're definitely trying that. Ooh, cerulean. That's one of my favorite colors. And cobalt. Naples yellow. Another Naples yellow. And then a lot of earth pigments, siennas. Okay, here's all the gouache. Look at that. Ooh, haven't heard of that one before. Oh my gosh, you guys, just look at these colors. Ah. All right, I have not opened these up at all. So this is my first experience even opening them up and trying to see how they squeeze out. This is gonna be really anticlimactic if they just don't work at all. Ignore my messy palette, please. This is the remainder of some hydras that was on there from a while ago. All right. Easy enough to get off. It still looks liquidy. All right, I'm gonna put it right here. This is the, uh, that was the cadmium that I just put down. This is the cerulean. Oh boy, this one feels a little bit more stuck. Oh man. All right, so that one's not gonna open right now. That's disappointing. All right, let's try the cobalt. There we go. That one's coming. This one looks a bit more dried out, but it's still something in there. All right, and then I think I'll try some alizarin. That is like good to go. I'm setting up this palette in a very disorganized way, not in color order at all. And there's another blue, indigo. Maybe I'll try that one. 
that one feels kind of dried out. Yeah. Mm. So this one I might be able to get something out if I like cut it open, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'll save that in case I make some big exciting piece with these. Yeah. All right. How about burnt sienna? Oh, there we go. That's good. This one seems brand new. Look at that. Maybe you didn't get a chance to use it. Yeah, that's like awesome. Wow. Way to go, Windsor and Newton. Yeah. All right. Just going to try out a few of those colors first, and then we'll try the gouache. Adding a little bit of, oh golly, I got the, I don't want to touch it because that's legit cadmium. Let's see. I mean, it's, it's definitely a bit sleepier than brand new watercolor would be, but it's waking up, definitely. Blue is the sleepiest one, definitely. Driest one. It's actually all kind of stuck in the bristles of the brush there. I don't know if you can see it. All right, so here it is. Here is the finished piece. Um, this was really fun. I didn't actually intend it to be a limited palette piece, but um, as you can see, it definitely ended up that way um, just because of the colors that, um, that were available and the colors that opened and the colors that worked. So it kind of has like a fall vibe, late summer vibe, which is perfect for right now. So um, yeah, honestly, 
I don't know. I, I guess I was sort of hoping to be able to like, whoa, they're so different or like they're way more amazing or they're totally destroyed or I don't know, like have something really dramatic. But in all honesty, they're like very similar. They feel very similar to um, working with uh, the watercolor that I have now. I can say that they are highly pigmented and like that's maybe the most dramatic difference is their um, every single color that I use is like super, super pigmented. Even the watercolors, which are opaque, I had to like add a lot more water to get them as um, watered down and translucent as I would with uh, watercolor that I use today, even tube watercolor. Um, and then the gouache is just like uh, crazy, tra um, not transparent, opposite opaque, oh, crazy opaque. So, um, and that one color, wow, spectrum violet. I don't know, I'm gonna have to look and see if they still make that color because that tube is almost dried out, um, but that's like a beautiful gouache color and I would use way more of that. So um, yeah, here it is. Mm. We'll see which one looks better, whether it's this one or uh, the shot here with my face or the shot with the camera, but um, Meg will put one in so you guys can see it. So um, yeah, I am sure I will do more with these, rather I'll like take on a piece where I wasn't just like messing around and testing it out, like actually use them in the creation of, uh, of a full on finished piece, maybe do a portrait. Um, I am gonna bring some pliers from home so I can try to open some of these stuck ones because I can feel that there's, there's still um, watercolor inside. And in all of these, even if like if I can't get it open I think what I would do is cut it open and try to put it into a pan because then I could still reactivate it with water even if it was super dried out um, since the gouache is a not a acrylic gouache it's a water-based gouache so it should be reactivatable so um, that's it hope you guys enjoyed this fun video let me know if you have any ideas or suggestions for future ones sorry about the lighting it's like suddenly started getting stormy outside um, since I started filming um, yes thank you to Meg for editing. Thank you to my patrons for supporting. Thank you to you all for watching. Hope you are having a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.